What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to SmackDown. We've only got a few more SmackDowns to go before WrestleMania. Four of them, thanks. Five episodes left in the series. Let's get right into the match preview. Match number one. Rey Mysterio taking on Kenny Dykstra. Some Cruiserweight exhibition action like we do. Chavito keeping a close eye on this match. The former Cruiserweight champion has released to the press that he is going to be using his rematch clause at WrestleMania. So the stage is set. Rey Mysterio will defend his Cruiserweight title against Chavito Guerrero at WrestleMania 23. Match number two, Marcus Corvon, William Regal for the Money in the Bank qualifier. We know Jeff Hardy's in that match. We still got two more participants to name from SmackDown heading into WrestleMania. Match number three, former United States champion Jeff Hardy and his brother Matt tagging up against Umaga and the new United States champion MVP representing the Hurt Business. Match number four, we've got the debut match of The Undertaker here in this series. It's going to be Undertaker versus Randy Orton. Randy Orton went through hell in a steel cage last week to free his boy Edge. And now he's got to face the man who abducted Edge, The Undertaker, one-on-one. -on -one. Our main event is not actually a match at all. It is a contract signing for WrestleMania. We know CM Punk is cashing in his Royal Rumble opportunity to face Mr. Kennedy for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. They are cementing that, putting it in writing in this contract signing. Big, big, big episode. Locking in, proceeding, simulating the first match. Rey Mysterio picks up the victory over Kenny Dykstra. Rey grabs the mic as Dykstra and Chavo are backing up the entrance ramp. Rey says... Any of the Cruiserweights can get it. If they feel like Rey Mysterio doesn't deserve to represent the Cruiserweight division, they can come and step up to him because everybody knows the work that Rey Mysterio has done to get in the spot that he's in. And Rey says, Chavo, if you want to challenge me at WrestleMania, I am not a coward and I will not turn down the challenge. And I will see you at WrestleMania 23. Match number two, Marcus Corvon, William Regal, Money in the Bank qualifier. This match is next. Here comes that man. Came up short last week against CM Punk on some shysty, shysty stuff. Actually, really, really, really looked good in that main event. I thought he was going to pull it out, get that WrestleMania title shot. Unfortunately, CM Punk, no one caught him using the ropes. But Mr. Corvon has got an opportunity here to get himself another title shot if he can win the Money in the Bank match, if he can qualify for the Money in the Bank. We'll see how it goes for the Alpha Male. But first, but first, he's got to get through the boy, Willie Riggs. He's as tough as they come. One of the most rugged superstars on the SmackDown roster. William Regal, the former United States Champion. Maybe he's the one to win the Money in the Bank match and plug his name into that main event scene, onto that list of prestige World Heavyweight Champions. What a universe, what a universe. Here we go, this match starting off fast. William Regal ducking Corvon. Corvon sent running, and William Regal puts Corvon on the ground rather quickly. But Corvon, you know, you know it's going to start off a little back and forth. These two know each other well. They've been in the United States title picture together for quite some time. But now, who is going to be able to separate from that mid card into that upper echelon, that main event status? Is it going to be Willie Riggs or is it going to be Marcus Corvon? 
Big DDT there, getting out of trouble, getting out of that fireman's carry, and now getting William Regal into a Boston Crab, adding insult to injury by using the Boston Crab on this Englishman. Okay, we got that big torture rack, back-breaking, gut-busting move. My goodness, such an impact there delivered by Marcus Corvon. It's his strength, his explosiveness, but right now he's got a real knack for catching knees to the face, and he's got to shape up if he wants to get into the Money in the Bank match, and William Regal's looking real good. He's got to keep it up if he wants to be in that Money in the Bank match, and now he's going to deliver a sickening stomp right to Marcus Corvon. My goodness, that is disgusting. William Regal feeling it. He is feeling himself. He is coming after Corvon. Corvon able to get William Regal away, get some separation here. And then he gets the spear. Get the spear with the fist to the face. My goodness, there you go, Corvon. Get on his ass. Get. Oh, no, William Regal says, brother, this is the last thing that you want to do with me is get in a battle of fists. So Corvon getting some mat work there on William Regal. Okay, big slam there. Out of the full Nelson position. Marcus Corvon is starting to gain a little bit of momentum here. William Regal now pulling out a submission of his own. The bow and arrow. Marcus Corvon able to get out of it. He's got to get something going. And both men very evenly matched. Marcus Corvon hitting him with another spear. More fists to the face. More fists to the forehead. And big slap to the back. Marcus Corvon always keeping the attack on William Regal. Oh, another spear delivered. The third one of the match. Marcus Corvon ain't taking no prisoners here. Marcus Corvon looking for some kind of running power slam, maybe. If, but William Regal might be able to. Oh, no. No, just taking all the air out of William Regal. An inverted kind of gut buster something. But he is attacking William Regal. William Regal is looking hurt. Marcus Corvon has got the upper hand. A clear advantage here. Maybe looking for the gore. I don't know if he's ready for it. Big STO there. My goodness. William Regal. The boy's got to be hurt. The boy has got to be hurting. And you almost feel bad for him. But not really. And we just hit him with the gore. We just hit him with the gore. Marcus Corvon. The, the, the connection was successful. And so was the pin attempt. Marcus Corvon moving on to WrestleMania. And Marcus. He has got his sights set on the money in the bank contract. He's going to get a world title shot somehow. Somehow, some way, if you ask him. He's got a few competitors in that match who are extreme top tier talent. Can he pull it through? Match number three, tag team match. We are simulating this match. The Hardy Boys pick up the victory after Chris Masters interferes and makes his mark against his former stablemates, running buddies, and best friend in MVP. We got Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, picking up the dubski. Chris Masters distracts MVP, Umaga, gets out of the ring to take care of Chris Masters. However, Umaga is the legal man, Matt Hardy the legal man, and Jeff Hardy, after Umaga deals with Chris Masters, Jeff Hardy just takes out everybody. Matt Hardy's still in the ring. The Hardy Boys win by a count out. Moving on, our next match, Undertaker, Randy Orton, one-on-one. -on -one. The first look of the dead man here on SmackDown. It's next. This moment is a long, long time coming in this series. We have not seen The Undertaker in any kind of visual gameplay to any extent. But the time has come where SmackDown is graced by the presence of the dead man. And the two of these gentlemen, rated RKO, Randy Orton, and Edge. 
They've got to stick through that presence of the Undertaker. And it just feels different facing the Undertaker than facing Kane. Kane, an absolutely terrifying man in his own right. But it just feels different. And just the size of, of Taker, man. He's a big boy. He is a big boy. Okay. Uh, Ra okay, Randy. Nope. Okay. Taker not going to be held in any kind of grapple at this point in the match. And Randy Orton hesitant to get in it into into the squabbles with Randy or, or with Undertaker. We know that Undertaker is probably the best brawler in all the WWE. Big vertical suplex there by Randy Orton. Immediately kicked out by Undertaker. He, that we, we'll say that was more of a quick snap suplex more than. Oh my goodness! A huge, huge uppercut. Absolutely just decking that man that we know as Randy Orton. Now Randy Orton, fireman's carry on Undertaker. Undertaker not liking it, not having any of it, and then hitting a big DDT there on the Legend Killer. This is. Quite the legend to match up with though, Randy. We know Randy and Undertaker have had their battles in the past, but this, those battles did not take place in this series, so therefore it didn't happen. Randy, he's trying, he's trying to just throw fists. Okay, nice drop kick there by Randy. Okay, running grapple, no good in that attempt. Came up short and Undertaker just hit him with a big clothesline there, my goodness. Undertaker now applying that camel clutch. Randy Orton, he's got to get out of it. Undertaker's a strong man. You don't want to be in any kind of submission hold under him. He might tap out. I'm not sure. It's not looking good. And Undertaker has to let go there. Randy Orton, not not in good shape. Not in good shape by any means. <laughs> he's just running out of the way. Nice swing and neck breaker there, Randy. Nice swing and neck breaker. Randy's got some life in him. He's going to fly. And he hits him with a big elbow. Big elbow drop from the top. And he just gets thrown down. Thrown down. That shit ain't gonna fly. No, sir, it is not. The two going back and forth. Randy Orton, nice backbreaker there. Vintage signature Randy Orton right there. Flipping the man over. And then, nope. Okay, Undertaker battling back. Big boot to the face. Delivered to Randy Orton. Randy Orton going for another fireman's carry of the sorts. Undertaker still not liking it. Not liking it any more than the first time, but this time he has to take it. He has to take it this time. And Undertaker... Randy Orton... Okay, a big flying elbow straight to the face this time. Delivered by Randy Orton. Randy Orton is getting some offense in, despite it being a little unconventional from what he's used to. And what do you... Another fireman's carry... Randy, a little redundant, brother, but a big Samoan drop, and Randy Orton is feeling himself, and we just might see an upset come out here. The former WWE champion, oh my goodness, just, he just told Orton to sit. He told Orton to sit on that one, just absolutely decked him. Uh-oh, Undertaker. Undertaker's looking to deliver a tombstone pile driver to young Randy Orton. This might be three here. Undertaker, one, two, three. He's got it. He's got the dub ski on Randy Orton. And Undertaker with an edge. Edge just spearheading the attack on Undertaker. And now the two of them, and now the two of them are just taken out. Absolutely just taken out Undertaker. And rated RKO would provide a better visual than this game can really allow. But they would hit The Undertaker and Kane both with chairs. They would take him out. They would hit Undertaker with the concerto. And really in kayfabe, um, Randy wouldn't take the loss through the tombstone. He would actually, they would just get themselves to swap. They would take the DQ to get that little bit of revenge on the Brothers of Destruction. Rated RKO takes out The Undertaker, gets a measure of revenge for The Undertaker abducting Edge. And then in the main event, you see we simulated it. We did th throw a world title implication on that thing just to give us a little extra bump in the ratings. Mr. Kennedy victorious in this, even though it's not a real match. 
we do see in the contract signing CM Punk does get put through a table by the Hurt Business. Mr. Kendi, Umaga, MVP. Umaga and MVP do the dirty work. They hoist CM Punk up on the shoulders of Mr. Kendi and he delivers a Green Bay plunge into the contract table after it is signed. And that's how this episode of SmackDown goes down. We got some shenanigans to get into. Just three more SmackDowns to go in this series. My goodness, I can't believe it. Kenny Carlito got some contracts expiring. And you know we're going to sign them boys. Make sure our United States champion's all good. There we go. Let's check out what the competition did on the previous shows. Start and a half for Chris Jericho and a created wrestler. Ashley loses her women's championship in an ultimate submission match to Melina. Three stars. Big six-man tag team match. Batista and Kali still teaming up. Elijah Burke, the tag team champion, not alongside his partner, Finley. Finley takes on Sandman in a steel cage match. And then John Cena loses to Candice Michelle and JTG in a singles match. Four-star show here for Raw. Make it make sense. Uh, Three-star show for ECW. Two blank matches. Kelly Kelly and Mickey defeat HBK and Rick Rude. Tori and Mark Henry defeat Snitsky and Sabu. Triple H and Ric Flair defeat Johnny Nitro and Shad. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. And then SmackDown, three and a half stars. We got four star cruiserweight match, four star money in the bank, three and a half star tag team match, four star Undertaker Randy Orton, four and a half star world title match. Let's check out WWE.com and just see how they feel like shafting us today. We get the match of the week. Raw gets the fans, 140,000 of them things. Let's check out the fan support. <laughs> We're at 2.5. I don't know what happened, guys. I really don't know why they don't like giving us the rankings. But we got the power 25 here. Mr. Kennedy still at the top of the WWE. That's going to do it for our episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you vote in the community tab which brand we go to for our next series. Until then, take it easy. Stay tuned. We'll catch you later.